Hello everybody, my name is Alex Axe, though I also do uh, writing under the name Alex Wells, but today I'm definitely Alex Axe, and I'm gonna read you a little selection from my super awesome steampunk book, Murder on the Titania and Other Steam-Powered Adventures, available from Queen of Swords Press, and you should totally buy it because it's a lot of fun, and there's bisexual Latina pirates, airship pirates. <laughs> Well, real, real pirates, really. So today I'm just going to read you a little bit from one of my favorite stories in this book, because it's a collection of novellas, which is The Curious Case of Miss Clementine Nimowitz and Her Exceedingly Tiny Dog. So we shall begin. It was a perfectly ordinary parlor, nicely decorated, pale lace doily sitting atop furniture done in heavy brown and gold brocade. The general color scheme was maroon and brown, with enough pink and yellow accents to keep it all from seeming too heavy or dark. While many such parlors were given to clutter as the wealthy owners attempted to display both their taste and overflow of cash with countless bits of frilly golden bric-a-brac, this one was neat and carefully tended, enough empty space around objects to draw the eye and invite inspection without being overwhelming. It was austere and quietly dignified. The careful effect of the decorating was, quite unfortunately, spoiled by the body majestically putrefying in the center of the rich carpet, a petite pistol with a mother-of-pearl grip still sitting in its lax hand. Even more disturbing to the serenity of the parlor was the shockingly tiny dog that stood next to the body. The white... One page at a time, self. The white fur of its muzzle rusty with old blood. The little animal growled in what was presumably a threatening manner, though it sounded more like a tea kettle burbling than anything else. You didn't expect this, did you, Captain? asked Meriwether Octavian Sims, known by preference as simply Sims to friend and foe alike. He did his best to take only shallow breaths, one hand meditatively smoothing down his generous ginger mutton chops. There were many possibilities I considered for this particular break-in, Captain Marta Ramos replied in a thoughtful draw. Drawl. As they were in the city, she dressed as a common workman, dark, sober clothes with her masses of curly brown hair hidden under an utterly disreputable hat. Her normal, far more flamboyant, and classically piratical scarlet frock coat tended to draw too much attention from the Grand Duchy of Denver's police and security forces. I am utterly unashamed to admit that this was not one of them. Sims cleared his throat. Did the dog... Yes, so it would seem. Uh, well, hmm... I suppose we can't blame the little fellow if it's been days and no one to feed him, can we? Hmm, well, yes, I concur. I would have thought that the old, if the old girl were planning to off herself, she might have sent her dog out for a walk. Well, it could have been worse. If she hadn't been kind enough to shoot herself in the head, they'd have been confronting a much different scene with a much different source of the growling. The tiny dog would have been eaten rather than the eater after infection had seen to the resurrection of its mistress, mindless and ravenous. Ugh, what a thought that was. Sims sometimes wished his imagination wasn't so finely tuned. Hmm. Captain Ramos rasped at her chin with fingers covered in rough leather. Well, might as well carry on. We didn't even be quiet now. She gave the dog a long, assessing look, as if gauging just how much damage its small teeth, driven by an obviously outsized ego, would be able to cause. Then she gave Sims a long, equally assessing look. A faint shrug of one shoulder, and she dug around in her pockets to disgorge a twist of string, a bird's nest of a fake beard, and then a packet of jerky wrapped in newspaper. The burbling growl abruptly stopped, the tiny plumed tail beginning to wag with canine hope. Captain Ramos snorted, untying the twine that held the packet closed. Mercenary little thing, isn't he? From what I've seen, most of them are, Sims observed mournfully, and indeed the little animal fell eagerly on the leathery straps of venison the captain tossed onto the carpet nearby, completely forgetting their presence in the bliss of, chew of chewing. All right. Captain Ramos nodded, folded the half-full packet neatly, and tucked it back into her pocket. I'll unlock the wall safe. See to the unfortunate Miss Nimowitz, Sims. There's a good chap. He had the body doubtfully. Are you certain that's who it is? Clementine Nimowitz was a somewhat eccentric but still highly respected lady of great society, the owner of the well-appointed townhouse and the intended victim of their robbery. Sims knew that much, or perhaps had been would be a more accurate way to consider all of those qualities. She doesn't have much of a face left, he grimaced, or much of a throat. I almost hope she isn't. My life would be so much more interesting then. I vote for boring if it's all the same to you. Sims sighed. Somehow, the moment the dank and earthy scent of decay had hit his nose, 
He knowed he, he'd known he'd end up dealing with the body. Unfortunately, as he lacked the captain's skill with saves, he could hardly argue that they should trade jobs. He looked down sadly at his gloves. I only just got these. You can have a pair of Miss Nimowitz's to replace them, Captain Ramos suggested in an overly sweet tone before heading to the save. Sim scowled at her, which, no doubt, which was no doubt precisely what she wanted, and moved toward the remains. While the unfortunate Miss Clementine Nimowitz might have been a grand lady of impeccable taste in life, death had done her no favors. In the darker, more proletarian depths of Sims's heart, he found that obliquely comforting. Her dress, heavy blue silk with cream lace, was curiously undisturbed by blood, but for the areas, neck, face, forearms, and calves, that the dog had felt free to nibble. Sims cautiously moved his hands over the fabric, trying to breathe shallowly through his mouth. A crackle caught his attention at her breast. He dug for it gingerly, face turned away, and came out with a sheaf of messily folded papers, one corner stiff and gluey with a stray red rivulet. Something tugged at his trouser leg. He glanced down to see the tiny dog. At his attention, it tugged again, tail wagging. Captain? Hmm? Toss the jerky over here, if you please. He caught the packet, tucked the papers under his arm so he could open it, and pulled out a few more bits of dried meat. The dog gleefully snatched up the venison, which had the side benefit of forcing it to release his trouser cuff. It was probably a good sign it preferred that to, fre to a fresh round of human flesh. The unpleasant task of rifling a corpse's pox pockets was thankfully abbreviated by the fact that Miss Nimowitz, as a refined, nearly cloistered lady, didn't have any. Sims took from her a bracelet, black with dried blood, a cloisonne pin, and a set of earrings. Feeling strangely guilty, he picked a series of gold hairpins from her blood-stiffened coif, finishing the destruction that the bullet and dog had begun. He nearly discarded her fan, but the ribs and guard sticks seemed to be made of delicately carved ivory, even if the cloth sail was ruined. He retreated from the dizzying stink of the corpse and laid out the few items on a nearby table next to a small china tea set. At first he thought the teapot, single cup, and tray upon which they sat were a display piece, but when he tapped the side of the pot, it proved to not be empty. Sims peered under the lid to find the pot half full of brown liquid. Hmm, guess she had a cup of before shooting herself. Civilized, I suppose. Bemused, he turned his attention to the papers he'd retrieved. Captain, he asked after a moment, I seem to have found Miss Nimowitz's, um, last will and testament. Shall I put it back? Curious, Sims, since I seem to have found that too. He eyed the document with a new sort of dubiousness. Right. Let me have a look. Captain Ramos walked over and tossed him an empty jewelry box lined with black velvet. See if the spaces in this match the jewelry you removed from her. The box is for the most expensive pieces of her collection, so I can only hope she was wearing those pieces at the time of her death, going out in style and all that. Sims handed over the stained sheaf of papers and then cracked open the box. The earrings did indeed fit perfectly, as did the bracelet, but the box still had more space, another neat slot. The pin definitely wasn't part of the set. Should there be a necklace? Hmm? Wasn't there one on her? Captain Romus glanced up from the papers in her hands. Not that I saw, but... Sims grimaced. I'll have another look. Wincing all the while, despite the fact that the lady was long beyond all pain or caring, he drew out his pocket knife and began to poke around the blackened mess that marked what was left of her neck. Sims, the will you found on Miss Nimowitz is two and a half weeks old, which puts it at, as relatively new at the time of her departure from the mortal coil. There was a pause, the sound of paper shuffling. They're nearly identical, but for the fact that Miss Nimowitz is now legally leaving the bulk of her estate to a fellow by the name of Mr. Morris Emmett Nimowitz, Nimowitz rather than another crackle of paper, Delia, of the same last name. Hmm. All the digging had unearthed nothing. Not really our problem, is it? Hmm. Hmm? Oh, he didn't like the sound of her tone at all. Well, not our problem, yes, but concern... No, he said firmly. Not our concern either. Unless we're named in the bloody will, and you'd already said we're not, which I'm actually quite glad of since I don't think I want to live in a world where suicidal elderly ladies are gifted with precognition, then the disposition of her estate isn't our concern at all, except for the more, the more portable bits. Frustrated, he prodded the corpse's head aside and spotted a delicate metallic glitter amidst a sea of not quite dry enough blood. It could be interesting, Sims. The affairs of the rich are ghastly and boring to anyone but themselves, he said stiffly as he bent to pry the bit of metal from the carpet. Your delight in boredom is something I will never understand, Sims, and... Captain, is this... He interrupted the all-too-familiar speech by straightening the metal bit in his fingers. She leaned forward and eyed it. The clasp of a necklace? Yeah. Broken off then, Sims frowned. But how? Oh... As one, they turned to look at the tiny dog and its bloody muzzle, which had no doubt all too recently been in the vicinity of Miss Clementine Nimowitz's neck. Oh, 
Sims finished in a faint tone. The dog, canine instincts addressing what to do precisely in this situation, wagged its tail and lifted one little paw adorably, asking for a shake. So that's the first section of the story. If you want to find out what happens to the tiny dog, who I will let you know is named Chippy, uh, then you're just going to have to buy the book and read it. And there's, if you go to my blog, there's a little side story about Chippy that I published recently called Sniff Sniff Adventure. So that is at katsudan.net. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>